Well, I think that there's an enormous uh, economic reconstruction job. I mean, they've been estimating hundreds of billions of dollars of damage to Ukrainian uh, infrastructure, not to speak of the thousands of people that have been uh, killed. Uh, the Russians are strangling Ukraine. They've basically imposed a blockade. You know, Ukraine before the war was one of the world's largest uh, grain exporters. Uh, they've not been able to get any of that out of the country after the war started or even before the war started. Uh, so I think that it's going to be a big mistake if the West, uh, you know, supposing that the Russians really do withdraw, they're defeated and they withdraw, there's going to be a temptation to breathe a sigh of relief and say, okay, the job is done. It won't be done because Ukraine is going to need a tremendous amount of economic support uh, with rebuilding uh, once the hostilities have ceased. When you say the job won't be done, uh, Professor, uh, let's talk about the broader job, as we mentioned previously, <laughs> this uh, confrontation between liberal democracy, so-called, and authoritarianism, so-called. I mean, here we are sitting in Singapore where uh, we kind of, I don't know where we fit in that calculus, according to uh, the perspective from Washington, uh, but it seems pretty comfortable from here. So what's going to happen next? In the long term, there's an awful lot of the globe that has refused to participate in the sanctions regime that really doesn't feel comfortable into being coerced into this liberal democratic frame of mind and certainly isn't probably looking forward to the notion that if Russia is defeated, we're going to see a renewed onslaught against the rest of us to try and impose liberal democracy here. How do you think the global... Well, look, the, look. <laughs> the United States doesn't launch onslaughts to impose liberal democracy, you know. This is a, an outcome of the Iraq invasion where the Bush administration, you, you know, it, was, it invaded Iraq for security uh, purposes on the mistaken view that there are weapons of mass destruction. When that didn't work, they then turned to democracy promotion uh, as the uh, reason, the motivation for this, uh, for this unnecessary war. And that's you know, somehow given people the idea that the United States is routinely in the habit of invading uh, people to uh, impose democracy on them. You know, the big democracy movements in Ukraine, in Georgia, in the Arab Spring, uh, you know, around the world are driven by people. They're driven by people on the ground, by civil society activists, by, uh, you know, people that don't want to live under a dictatorship. It's not something that's being engineered by the United States and imposed on other people. So I, I think you can relax that Singapore is not going to be invaded by the United States, you know, once this war is over. I think you're probably pretty safe where you are. 